Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the proteomics course. Today we will talk about matrix assisted laser desorption ionization, time of flight, MALDITOF. In previous lecture, we talked about basics of mass spectrometry, the various combinations of mass analyzers and ionization sources. Now, it is time for us to combine those and start discussing these in more detail. So, today let us focus on the MALDITOF, which is one of the very widely used technique in proteomics. This provides a high throughput platform for several applications including molecular weight determination, protein identification as well as post translational modification studies. So, in today's lecture, we will talk about basics of MALDITOF, how to prepare the sample for MALDITOF or TOF TOF analysis, which will include in gel digestion, you want to do the proteolytic digestion of the samples, followed by cleaning up a strip which requires zip tip, then how to prepare the matrix and place those on the sample plating. Then we will talk about multi instrumentation. Let us first start about basics of MALDITOF. So, MALDI is an efficient process for generating gas fail oils of peptides and proteins for mass spectrometric detection. MALDI is one of the most widely used ionization technique currently applicable in the proteomics area. This ionization method was independently developed by two scientists Koichi Tanaka and Helen Camp. Tanaka also received the Nobel Prize for his novel contribution into soft ionization technique such as MALDI. So, let us go through the some of the basic concepts involved in the MALDI TOF. We can split that in two parts. One is MALDI which is ionization source and other is TOF which is a mass analyzer. Let us first talk about matrix assisted laser desorption ionization or MALDI. So, analyte or the proteins of interest are mixed with the matrix which is usually an aromatic compound. The various type of matrices available which we will talk in more detail when we come to the uh, sample preparation and matrix selection. But just for your uh, reference, we can use 2,5-dihydroxybenzoic acid, we can use sinapenic acid and there are several other choice. Once you selected a matrix for the experiment, then analyte and matrix can be dissolved in an organic solvent, after which then it can be placed on the metallic target. As you can see in the slide, the first left section shows you how to place the analyte and matrix together on the sample plate. Now, once you have placed the matrix and the analyte on the target plate, you can put that in the vacuum chamber and apply high voltage. Now, these crystals are targeted with the short laser beams as you can see in the slide, then rapid sublimation can convert analyte into the gas phase oils. Now, these oils once generated, they can accelerate away from the target plate through the mass analyzer which is time of flight TOF tube and they can reach towards the detector. Now, this process is shown in the right hand side of the slide. The various advantages and disadvantages of using multi as an ionization source. The sample preparation is very easy. 
the moiety provides high tolerance to salt as compared to the electro ionization methods. The moiety produces single charge species. Most analytes can accept the single photon. The single charge characters can result in some molecules having large mass to charge values. So, therefore, the multi is typically integrated with the top mass analyzers, which can provide the m by z range for the large ions as well. Now, these are various merits of using multi. Obviously, it has to be connected with the top. Now, there are various demerits of using the system. There is a strong dependence on how to prepare good sample for the this analysis. So, sample preparation methods heavily influence the uh, spectrum generated from these experiments. So, the top mass analyzers they consist of ion acceleration and focusing optics and a flight tube. As shown in the slide, you have a source, the sample ionization is occurring due to the laser beam bombardment, then ions are moving in the time of flight tube and reaching towards the detector. Now, often we can also add the reflector an ion mirror which can increase the path length. So, this time of flight tube it measures the mass to charge ratio of ions based on time it takes for ions to fly in the analyzer and strike to the detector. Now, the mass is exponentially proportional to the flight time, how much time it takes to travel in the time of flight tube. So, ions of the lower masses are accelerated to the higher velocities. Now, time of flight tubes often outperforms scanning mass analyzers in its sensitivity and scan speed. The time of flight of a charged ion can be calculated by using the equation shown in this slide. The flight time is directly proportional to the square root of mass of the ion. Now, this equation T represents the time of flight, m is mass of the ion, q charge on ion, v 0 is accelerating potential and l is the length of flight tube. In time of flight tubes, the ions are accelerated to high kinetic energy and due to the different velocities, they are separated in a flight tube. As I mentioned earlier, by adding the reflectron or a reflector, the ions can turn around in the reflector that can compensate for minor differences in the kinetic energy. Now, if you take an example where you have three ions as shown in the dark blue, light blue and the red color in the slide. Now, you will expect that the small ion which is the red one will show the first peak followed by the blue ion and then the dark blue one. After discussing some of these basic concepts of using MALDI and TOF, now let me give you an overview of entire MALDI TOF experiment by showing you the following animation. Fundamentals of MALDI TOF MS the time of flight analyzer resolves ions produced by the ionization source on the basis of their mass to charge ratio. The time of flight tube can be operated in the linear mode or the reflectron mode, which depends on the sample to be analyzed. In case of small molecules, this mode usually provides sufficient resolution. The generated ions are accelerated towards the detector with the lighter ion traveling through the top tube faster than the heavier ions. So, the lighter ion travels faster and strikes the detector before the heavier ion reaches to the detector. This time of flight or the top tube 
can be correlated with the mass of the ion. So, the flight of time of the ions can be correlated with the mass to charge ratio. As we talked earlier, the top analyzer can also be operated in the reflectron mode. So, this is more commonly used for the proteomic studies. A reflectron which acts as an ion mirror is incorporated at one end of the time of flight tube. This helps in extending the path length and in turn the flight time of the ion without having to increase the actual size of the instrument. So, rather than using very long time of flight tubes by including the reflectron ion mirrors, we can increase the path length. This helps to even out any kinetic energy differences between the ions having the same mass and thereby improving the resolution. The time of flight of a charged ion can be calculated by means of the equation shown here. The flight time is directly proportional to the square root of mass of the ion. Sample preparation and spotting. The protein sample must be prepared suitably before it can be analyzed by the mass spectrometer. If you have run a 2D gel, so first of all the purified protein of interest need to be excised from the gel on which it has been electrophoresed and dissolved in the suitable buffer. So, depending upon the application, if you have purified a protein, you can separate that on the gel and then cut that band or if you have a mixture of the proteins in 2D gel, you can just excise that particular spot. A spot can be dissolved in the suitable buffer. Trypsin is then added to this mixture in order to carry out digestion of the protein. Trypsin cleaves the protein at the C terminal of the arginine and lysine residues, but that is not always universal. If you have a proline present immediately after, then it will hinder that. But overall, the protein is digested into smaller fragments of manageable size. Once the protein sample has been digested, all the salt, buffer and any detergent must be removed from the sample. So, after doing angel digestion and before proceeding for the mass spectrometry analysis, in between an efficient step is to use some filters or zip tip which can eliminate some of these contaminants and salts. It offers several advantages such as quick purification, sample enrichment and ensures that there is no contamination. So, there are multiple advantages of using zip tips. However, it can purify only limited volume of the sample and also it adsorbs some amount of the protein sample thereby leading to losses. The purified protein sample can be mixed with an aromatic matrix compound such as alpha cyano 4 hydroxy cinnamonic acid or cinnapinic acid in the presence of an organic solvent. The components are mixed thoroughly and then the solution containing the organic matrix with the embedded analyte of interest can be spotted onto a metallic Maldi sample plate. Maldi gives you an opportunity to analyze 
large number of samples in high throughput fashion. The target plate containing the spotted matrix and analyte can be further placed in a vacuum chamber with high voltage and short laser pulse are applied. The laser energy gets absorbed by the matrix and is transferred to the analyte molecules which undergo rapid sublimation resulting in gas phase ions. The gas phase ions generated are accelerated and travel through the flight tube at different rates. The lighter ion moves rapidly and reaches the detector first while the heavier ions migrate slowly. These ions are resolved and detected on the basis of their mass to charge ratio and a mass spectrum is generated. Parameters such as geometric design, power supply quality, calibration method, sample morphology, ion beam velocity etcetera all of these factors affect the accuracy of mass detection. After looking at the animation, now let us talk about how to prepare the sample. Let us discuss these steps in more detail. The first part will be in gel digestion of the protein samples. So, the mass spectrometric identification of the target protein greatly depends on the efficacy of in gel digestion process that generates a mixture of peptides from the target protein through proteolytic digestion. This slide gives you an overview. Since in the last module we discussed about two dimensional gel electrophoresis, it shows that if you have a spot of interest, you can excise that spot from the 2D gel and then subject that to in gel digestion followed by the mass spectrometric analysis. In gel digestion is a multi step procedure which includes a spot selection, a spot excision, removal of the stain, reduction, alkylation, proteolytic cleavage as well as peptides extraction. So, there are multiple steps are involved and how good your angel digestion is, is going to ensure the success of the spectrum generated from the mass spec. Now, although this overview shows you the process to start with the 2D gel, but same can be also applied for even the gel free proteomic techniques. If you want to analyze the sample even from the uh, gel free proteomic based approaches, it is often good idea to separate those protein complex mixture on the uh, SDSP gel, excise the bands and then extract the proteins from that perform the angel digestion so that you can simplify the proteome and then you can increase the overall proteome coverage. So, similar protocol can be modified and used for various type of applications in the proteomics. So, this slide gives you various recipe for performing in gel digestion. The first step is the de-staining of the spots or the band because you have stained the gels with the Kumasi brilliant blue or some other stains and first of all you would like to remove the stains. So, stain removal is essential prior to the mass spectrometric analysis. The excised gel pieces should be washed with the bicarbonate buffer and acetonitrile for removal of the staining agent. You can see the recipe in the slide. We will talk more about how to do these experiments when we come to the animation of these uh, steps. Estonitrile reduces the hydrophobic interaction between protein and the stain while the ionic solution decreases the ionic interaction between negatively charged Kumasi brilliant blue 
डाइ एंड द पॉजिटिवली चार्ज प्रोटीन वन द कुमासी डी स्टेनिंग और द डी स्टेनिंग स्टेप इज परफॉर्म देन वी नीड टू डिहाइड्रेट द जेल पीसेस विच कैन बी डन बाई यूजिंग एडिशन ऑफ एसिटोनाइट्राइल आफ्टर दिस इनक्यूबेशन इज डन देन यू आर रेडी फॉर परफॉर्मिंग रिडक्शन स्टेप नो वाई रिडक्शन स्टेप इज रिक्वायर्ड सो आफ्टर द स्टेन रिमूवल द नेक्स्ट स्टेप्स आर इंक्लूडिंग रिडक्शन एज वेल एज एल्काइलेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन रेसिड्यूज सो दैट यू कैन डी नेचर द प्रोटीन इन टू इट्स प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर कंटिन्यूइंग ऑन टू द सेम थीम ऑफ इंजल डाइजेशन एंड वेर इज स्टेप्स रिक्वायर्ड टू परफॉर्म सच एक्सपेरिमेंट लेट्स नाउ लुक एट द नेक्स्ट स्टेप विच इज एल्काइलेशन सो इन द एल्काइलेशन यू नीड टू एड द आइडोस्टामाइड the reformation of disulfide bonds may occur so to prevent that idostamide which is an alkylating agent is used here again you need to do the dehydration step as the recipe is mentioned in the slide you can add the acetonitrile and then you are ready to perform the digestion which is usually done by using trypsin so prior to the ms identification proteins are digested to generate peptides there are various enzymes which one can use for performing this step but trypsin is most widely used proteolytic enzyme used for the protein digestion it breaks the peptide bonds at the carboxy terminals of a basic amino acids such as arginine and lysine once digestion is done which is usually the overnight step then one need to do the peptide extraction of the digested proteins so peptides generated through the proteolytic cleavage can be extracted by using recipe including a uh, formic acid or trifluoroacetic acid tfa in the 50% acetonitrile solution now coming back to the importance of reduction and alkylation of the proteins we mentioned that we need to add dtt and ia in various steps during the ingel digestion process so dtt is important for treatment of proteins to break the disulfide bonds which we have also talked in the sample preparation when we discussed earlier now idostamide it adds the idostamide group to the sulfhydryl group and prevents disulfide bond formation so these steps are quite important in ingelization process so coming to the specificity of trypsin first of all let's discuss why we need to do the proteolytic digestion so you want to generate the peptides with the molecular weight within the mass range of mass spectrometer so you always want to simplify the process for even very superior analytical instruments so that you can increase the efficiency of the process the enzymatic digestion are performed with the various enzymes but typically with the trypsin which cleaves at the c terminal of lysine and arginine residues but exceptions can occur with the proline if proline is present then that uh, breakage will not happen so one can use the modified trypsin which is a serine endopeptidase however it cleaves at the proline uh, lysine and the proline arginine bonds at the much lower rate you can see the cleavage process and the specificity in this slide where it shows if you have the lysine or arginine residue it can break the bonds but when there is a proline residue present there then it cannot cleave so the ingel digestion of proteins isolated by the gel electrophoresis remains a core area in the mass spectrometry or in any of the proteomics applications so the following video which we are going to watch is going to provide the broad guideline for the ingel digestion however the recipe is very flexible and it varies from lab to lab to meet the specific requirements of particular proteomic experiment 
The angel digestion procedure is compatible with the downstream mass spectrometry analysis, whether you want to continue with the Malditoff or you want to do the LCMS based mass spectrometry analysis. The angel digested protein samples are further processed by using zip tip pipette tips which contains C 18 or C 4 media for enrichment of peptides prior to MS analysis. Zip tip pipette tip is a 10 microliter pipette tip with a bed of chromatography media fixed at its end. It is used for concentrating and purifying peptides as well as removing salts, detergents and interfering agents. So, first you need to attach the zip tip pipette tip on top of a suitable micro pipette. Condition the zip tip with 10 microliter of acetonitrile. Perform the wash step 3 times and wash it with 0.1 percent trifluoroacetic acid or TFA. So, after watching this video, now you are very clear about the angel digestion process, how various steps are uh, important to perform these experiments. Now, once you have done the angel digestion, you can directly use these triptych digest for further mass spectrometry analysis, but it is often recommended that in between you add one more step which is sample cleanup. You do not want your columns or your uh, multi instrument to get clogged due to the salt or some other interfering uh, residues present in the mixture. So, it is recommended that one should use a cleanup step in between. So, the angel digested protein they can be cleaned up by processing further using zip tip pipette tips which contain C 18 or C 4 media for enrichment of the peptides. Salts and interfering agents the detergents are washed and finally, the samples can be eluted in a very small volume of the solvent. So, this zip tip is very small tip like device for removal of salts as well as other interfering components from the protein sample and it is performed before injecting the sample for the mass spectrometry analysis. The zip tips can be incorporated into high throughput robotic devices or multi channel pipettes for the high throughput applications. Let me show you this video for the sample cleanup by using zip tips. Angel digested protein samples can be further processed by using zip tip. This animation shows the washing solution of 0.1 percent TFA passing through the zip tip column. Now, load the sample of your interest onto the zip tip by pipetting 5 to 10 microliter of samples and this step has to be repeated 10 to 15 times. So, you can do the binding of peptides to this activated zip tip by aspirating and dispensing 10 cycles. So, samples are passed through the activated zip tip where they are captured in particular bed of chromatography media. Now, wash this C 18 tip thrice with 10 microliter of 0.1 percent TFA to remove the salt and other interfering components. So, these steps ensure the salts and detergents are washed and finally, 
samples can be eluted in a very small volume of solvent. Now, elute the sample from the zip tip with 10 microliter of 50 to 70 percent acetonitrile in 0.1 percent of trifluoroacetic acid. After the elution is done, then you can keep these processed samples in cryo boxes and store in minus 20 degree centigrade freezers. The initial digested samples which have been processed by using zip chips can be further analyzed by using mass spectrometry. So, now you know how to perform the cleaning step by using zip tips. Now, you have the sample ready and you have selected the matrix. So, now let me show you this various steps involved before you can actually start the MALDI experiment. So, you need to select the matrix, you need to prepare matrix, you have already done the sample purification. Now, sample need to be deposited on the MALDI plate, either you can mix with the matrix or you can do these two separately, there are various combinations one can try and then once both sample and matrix is deposited on the MALDI target plate, then you are ready to do the drying and then plate can be used for MALDI TOF uh, instrument for further analysis. Let us first talk about matrix selection. So, the important step in MALDI TOF analysis is selection of appropriate matrix for the sample. The matrix selection mostly depends on the molecular weight of the target to be analyzed and often the type of application which you intend to do by using these uh, instruments. So, these matrices are low molecular weight organic compound with low vapor pressure and volatile nature. Most of the matrices are acidic in nature, so it can easily excite the photon and ionize analyte for the analysis. However, there are few basic matrices are also available. In the slides, I am giving you an overview of few matrices and some of their properties, but there are many more properties which uh, is not mentioned here, but just to give you uh, certain major features of these matrices commonly used for the various applications. So, one is the alpha cyano 4 hydroxy cinnamonic acid. When you have peptides less than 5000 Daltons or lipids and nucleic acid, one can use this matrix. One can also use cinnamonic acid if peptides and proteins are having more than 5000 Daltons and it can also be sometimes used for the lipids. Then you have options such as 2, 5 dihydroxybenzoic acid also known as DHB, small molecules and peptides which are not ionized by the other molecules can be analyzed by using this matrix. Trihydroxyacetophenone THAP, this is used for small nucleotides and also used for phosphorylation and specialized applications. Then we have picolinic acid which is generally used for the nucleotides. So, these are only few representative matrices as you can see there are many options available for selecting the matrix depending on the molecular weight and the type of applications. But regardless of these, these matrices absorb energy from the laser source and converts both matrix and analyte into the gaseous phase. Matrix can also ionize analyte molecule by providing energy which comes from the laser bombardment. Now, once you have selected a matrix, matrix can be prepared by mixing it into a suitable solvent and vortex it for few minutes, so that it can dissolve properly. Now, you are ready with 
both your analyte the protein which you want to analyze as well as the matrix which you have selected for your application. Now, one need to think how to deposit that sample on the MALDI target plate. So, there are many ways of deposition of sample and matrix onto the MALDI plate. Mostly sample and matrix are mixed in a Pandorf tube and then the mixture is directly deposited by using a micro pipette onto the MALDI plate. But one can also try various combinations. In one approach, the sample is first deposited to the MALDI plate followed by the matrix is deposited above it and then it is properly mixed before drying process can happen. Other way of doing is to apply that with the sandwich based method in which first a small amount of matrix is deposited on the plate. Then you add the protein sample and again the matrix is, is potted on top of it. So, that you have enough matrix in the below and the above of the analyte. So, one can try different combination of placing the matrix and the analyte. And then once you have placed all of this sample of interest on the multi plate, then you are ready to dry the target plate. So, after spotting is done and multi plate is dried almost 30 minutes, then the instrument can be turned on and MS analysis can be performed. Now, there are various type of configuration of these instruments available as well as there are various type of commercial software which help to operate the hardware. It is not possible to go into individual detail, but I am going to show you the generic steps in the following video of Multitof instrumentation. Maldi is performed in two steps. In first step, the compound for the analysis should be dissolved in a solvent containing a small organic molecules known as matrix. This mixture is dried before analysis and liquid solvent used in the preparation of solution is removed. So, in this video, by depicting the matrix preparation as well as instrumentation, we will try to give you overview of the multi TOF instrumentation. So, spot the mixture on the multi plate. How uniformly you can plate these mixtures on the multi plate ensures your good spectra and data quality later on. Completed on the multi plate, the samples are allowed to dry for 30 minutes. After which the instrument is switched on and MS analysis can be performed. While these steps are happening, you need to ensure that instrument is on. So, click on the software and open the acquisition window and then click on the open door. Insert MALDI target plate, face up with the cutoff corner to the front and now by using software close door. The door of insertion chamber is now closed. You can select the plate, you can view the overall plate on the screen and then select the spot which you want to analyze. So, click on the yellow target in the acquisition window and select go to the location. You can now do the laser bombarding and peptide spectrum is generated. We have shown here one standard protein bovine serum albumin. So, you have to look at various location where you can get best spectra from that spot. 
and then you can freeze it. Same process can be performed for different spots and different regions. Now, we have shown here a spectra for the pep mix. In gel digestion of proteins for MS analysis video, often one or two dimensional electrophoresis is applied for separation of complex mixtures of proteins prior to mass spectrometric analysis. In gel proteolytic digestion of separated proteins is performed to cleave the proteins of interest present within the polyacrylamide matrix. You can see the overview of various steps involved in this process. One can use one dimensional electrophoresis or take the protein samples directly from the mass spectrometry based experiments. Separate those on LDS page or 2D gel and then excise the band of interest or a spot of interest. The gel based techniques increases the dynamic range of analysis since they involve sequential separation of proteins based on the molecular weight, lower to higher molecular weight. The mass spectrometric identification of the target protein greatly depends on the efficacy of the in gel digestion process that generates mixture of peptides from the target protein through proteolytic digestion. This slide gives you the overview of various steps involved in the in gel digestion process and also how various type of samples can be analyzed by using this method whether you have 1 D SDS page gel, 2 D SDS page gel. In either way you have to do the in gel triptych digestion. Once the peptide fragments are generated then those can be analyzed using LCM SMS or maldi -Tof, tof or different type of hybrid mass spectrometry techniques. So, in gel digestion it is a multi step procedure, but remains central to the proteomic applications. Angel digestion includes a spot selection, a spot excision, a stain removal, reduction, alkylation, proteolytic cleavage and finally, extraction of the peptides. So, let us say you have run a gel First of all, you need to rinse the entire gel with water for few hours with intermittent changing of the water. Now, you would like to excise the band of interest or the spot of interest. So, keep a glass plate inside a laminar hood and clean the surface carefully. Excise protein spot with a clean sterile scalpel and place the gel slice into a Pandorf tube. It is possible you have excised a large spot or large band. Then cut the slice into cubes while avoiding two small pieces as they can clog the pipette tips. So, this is the larger spot. You cannot directly take this one for doing the angel digestion. So, you need to excise that into a small cubes. Now, keep these the small gel pieces into a sterile micro centrifuge tube. Now, you can add 50 to 100 microliter of stain removal solution. For the large gel pieces take enough liquid to cover it completely. So, you can adjust the volume 
depending on the size of your spots or the band. After addition of the stain removal solution, rotate it on a shaker for 30 minutes at room temperature for complete removal of the stain from the gel pieces. It is recommended that you change the solution after every 10 minutes. By changing the solutions and removing it after every 10 minutes, the Kumasi Brilliant Blue stained gel pieces becomes colorless. So, you have seen the animation. Now, once the staining is removed, then you can add dehydration solution. So, add 50 to 100 microliter of dehydration solution and rotate that on the room temperature. You need to ensure that you change the solutions after every 10 minutes, so that gel pieces becomes white and stick together. Now, I spin the gel pieces down at 1000 G for 30 seconds. Once centrifusion is complete, then remove all the liquid. After removing the solution completely, then add reduction solution. So, add 30 to 50 microliter of reduction solution to completely cover the gel pieces. Incubate it 30 minutes at 56 degrees centigrade. Now, treatment of protein residues with dithiothretol breaks the disulfide bonds. Now, chill down the tubes to room temperature, add 50 microliter of dehydration solution, mix it properly and incubate for 10 minutes. To remove all the liquids. Then add alkylation solution. So, add 30 to 50 microliters of alkylation solution and incubate it for 20 minutes at the room temperature in dark condition. The iodostamide prevents the reformation of disulfide bonds. It is an alkylating agent. It adds iodostamide group to the sulfhydryl group and prevents disulfide bond formation. Now, your incubation is over. So, you can remove the tubes and now remove the solution. Now, add 50 microliter of dehydration solution, mix it properly by vortexing and incubate it for 10 minutes. Again, you need to remove all the solution. Air dry the gel pieces and then add 25 microliter of trypsin solution around 500 nanogram. 
chat trips into the dry gel pieces and keep it on ice for 30 minutes for absorption of enzyme by the gel pieces. Add 25 microliter of ammonium bicarbonate buffer. It is same buffer in which trypsin is prepared and incubate at 37 degrees for overnight 12 to 16 hours for proper proteolytic cleavage. So, prior to MS identification, proteins are digested to generate peptides. There are several proteolytic enzymes are available chymotrypsin, trypsin, pepsin are some of the enzymes commonly used for proteolysis. After the overnight step, you have to stop the reaction by keeping the reaction mixture in ice. Now, after the overnight incubation, the peptides generated through the proteolytic digestion can be extracted by using extraction buffer containing 0.1 percent formic acid or trifluoroacetic acid in 50 percent of acetonitrile solution. Now, collect the supernatant in the small helicots and extracted samples can be stored in these small helicots. The efficient extraction process is essential to ensure the release of peptides from the gel matrix to the solution. Now, all the solution volumes described in the protocols are recommended volumes, but depending upon the experimental requirement, you can optimize and change these volume and the incubation timing according to the your experimental requirements. Now, these samples can be stored and used for the further mass spectrometry analysis. So, now you are clear with how to perform the Maldi-Toff experiment. Now, let us add one more mass analyzer. So, now we have a configuration of Maldi-Toff Toff. So, Maldi can be coupled to the tandem time of flight in combination with another time of flight. So, Toff Toff or with hybrid quadruple time of flight analyzers which are separated by the collision cells. Now, for proteomic application, it is recommended to use the Toff Toff or Q Toff. The peptide ions are accelerated through the first time of flight tube as you can see in the slide and then they are dissociated by introducing an inert gas into the collision cell. This process allows the collision induced dissociation spectra from the MALDI produced from the precursor ions. Now, these hybrid configurations are more sensitive than the triple quad and the single time of flight. So, the combination of TOF TOF allows the protein identification through the peptide mass fingerprinting and high throughput analysis of the protein or proteome is possible with the hybrid TOF analyzers. So, in summary, today we talk about basics of Maldi TOF. We have also discussed the sample preparation, various steps involved including ingel digestion, matrix selection, zip tipping, and after that, very briefly we discussed about Maldi-Toff instrumentation and then we talked about how various type of hybrid configurations can be used to increase the overall sensitivity and various applications for the proteomics. We will continue our discussion on the mass spectrometry. In the next lecture, we will talk on the liquid chromatography based methods. Thank you.